Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the social media podcast that helps service providers to level up their Instagram game and become more confident at it. In this podcast, you learn about the latest updates and trends in the social media space and get a glimpse into my life as a social media manager and coach. Let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. Some of you might already know this, but if you aren't following me on Instagram or on Facebook, which you should, by the way, then you don't know that in the last month I have been traveling throughout New Zealand with my boyfriend and my parents, and I have been working remotely. So usually I work from my little home office here on the Kapiti Coast, But in the last 30 days or so, I have been working from, yeah, anywhere in New Zealand, basically. So I thought in this episode, I would share my experience on how it went, what working remotely and being a digital nomad, if you want to call it that, was like, and give you some tips on how you can also work remotely for a short time like I did or even for a more extended period of time. I've gotten a few questions on Instagram as well that I will try to answer in this episode. But if you do have any other questions that I didn't really answer today, then send me a message on Instagram or an email and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is build a business that allows you to work remotely, right? (laughs) That this seems quite straightforward, but you need to have a business that you can take anywhere. So if you have a product-based business that heavily relies on your warehouse where you have to ship stuff from or even make the stuff first yourself, it might be a bit tricky to do that from anywhere in the world. Whereas a service-based business, it's much easier to take along with you. What is also important with the kind of business that you build is that from the start, if becoming a digital nomad or being able to work remotely is one of your goals, of course, you should always make sure that you take on the right clients that allow you to work from anywhere. And with allowing, I don't mean that they are your boss and they can say, no, you cannot work remotely because obviously they are not. I mean, clients that make it possible to take them with you wherever you want to go in the world. Clients like that respect boundaries, so they know that you might not be available 24-7, especially if you're traveling. You need clients that can plan ahead, so that aren't really last-minute kind of people that want 20 changes in a day and then the next day want it all reversed. And you need clients that can communicate effectively and tell you when they need certain things. So if you have clients like that, that is already a good prerequisite for becoming a digital nomad. Now, what I did with my clients was that I told them far in advance that I would be working remotely. So Not just two weeks before, but like one and a half months before, I told them I was going to be away for the whole of October, but obviously still managing their pages and doing my workload. So I didn't reduce any of my hours or packages with my social media management clients. But what I did do was block my agenda for coaching sessions. I already knew that I didn't want to have a fixed schedule where I would have to rush back to our accommodation to be able to do a coaching session because that wouldn't have been nice for me and potentially also not for the coaching clients because they potentially would not have been able to see me or hear me because the Wi-Fi wasn't always 100% great. So that was a decision that I took before leaving and I would definitely recommend doing that as well to not have a full workload if you're planning on traveling every single day. Now, a second tip that I can give you is that you should plan ahead as much as possible because you do have to organize a few things when you're away. For us, we already knew in March or April, I think, that my parents were going to be here for the whole month of October. So 
I already planned my whole business and marketing planning around the fact that they were going to be here in October. So I didn't accept any workshops or presentations for October. I also told potential consulting clients that I wouldn't be available in October. So they they knew that before making a decision, etc. So the more time you have before you're <laughs> working remotely, the better. Because this gives you an advantage of not having last minute stress of having to cancel stuff or doing stuff even though you're already stressed out with packing and these kind of things. So plan far ahead, as far ahead as you can. And when you're there, which we'll talk about later still, keep a to-do list with all the things that you need to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or just in general a to-do list, because otherwise it might be easy to forget about certain tasks, especially if you're not in your usual work environment where you get reminded that you need to work. Another thing that now thinking back I would have changed probably was to plan enough rest days, so non-travel days, to recharge and to do some uninterrupted work. What I did now was mostly wake up in the morning quite early. I'm in general someone who wakes up around seven-ish, the latest, anyways, even without an alarm. So what I would do is wake up, grab a cup of tea and start working before everyone else would even get up. And mostly I got half an hour to an hour and an hour and a half of work done before everyone else even got up. But then we started packing up, we had to check out from the accommodation and then travel to the next place, do touristy stuff in between. And then we would be at the accommodation, the new accommodation again in the evening. And potentially I could have worked then in the evening, but I think I always just worked in the morning if I remember correctly. So what I would have done differently, and this is obviously wasn't possible because my parents didn't have that much time to come here. I mean, a month is a lot of time, but then again, also not if you want to travel the whole country. So I would have planned more non-travel days. So where you stay for two nights at a place so that you don't have to check out in the morning. You can take your time. You can do a bit of more uninterrupted work. And this is especially important if you're doing harder tasks that do involve a bit of being focused, concentrating, and not just small tasks that you can squeeze in between. But that being said, I think it worked out pretty well. Nobody complained in our travel group, so <laughs> that was good. But yeah, if you can and if you have the time, plan a few rest days so you can recharge and so you can have some longer work sessions if needed. Another thing, talking about accommodations, Try to have accommodations with good Wi-Fi. <laughs> Read the reviews when you book a place, whether that is on Airbnb or Booking.com or any other place. Have a look what the people are saying if they have mentioned before that there was really bad connection or no connection at all. Because if you work online like me, then it is quite important that you can access the tools that you want to use, that you can send messages to your clients, download stuff. And if the Wi-Fi isn't great, that is just not going to work. So make sure that you have good Wi-Fi. I personally also still bought some extra data on my phone just to be safe. And I actually needed that because in one of our accommodations, we did not have Wi-Fi for a few days. So... I could use my phone data and that was just something that helped me be more relaxed about having to do client work without Wi-Fi. Another thing before you even leave is to work on your mindset. And I know working on your mindset is not something that you can just do in a day, but it's more of a process. What I want you to remember is that things are rarely urgent. Especially if you work in social media or uh, as a copywriter, as a graphic designer, nobody is going to die if you submit that post a day later, right? You're not uh, an emergency doctor that really 
people depend on, you know, things are rarely urgent. So if your clients know that you're away and that you're working fewer hours and, you know, you let them know that when they need things, they should tell you a little bit longer before so you can plan because you're not going to be working your full hours then it's going to be fine and I have to say I was a little bit stressed before leaving about if there would be any urgent things or things happening like a post didn't go up or a link didn't work or whatever but in the end everything was fine I didn't have any emergencies and In the end, I sent my clients an email. I said, hey, I am back full time again. If you need anything, let me know. And none of them ditched me or said this was the worst month ever. I bet they barely noticed that I wasn't even there because I usually am also not in their office. So it's not like we hear and see each other 24-7 anyways. Another question that I have gotten on Instagram was about the tools and systems that I used to keep track of my workload, communicate with clients and just keep up to date. That would be my next tip. When you set up your business in the first place, set up systems that allow you in the first place to go and work remotely. So, you know, not have everything written down on a piece of paper, but maybe on your computer so you can access it from anywhere. And use tools that allow you to keep organized. The things I use are Trello. I keep um, a very detailed daily to-do list on there and also a general to-do list of things that I need to do, not necessarily today, but you know, sometime in the future. So that's all in there. I communicate with my clients either via email, Slack, or just on Instagram. So that all needs internet as well. Um, And otherwise, we just use simple Google Drive documents or we communicate via Airtable where we plan content. So those are the main tools that I used. Nothing fancy. Most of them are the free version and they work really, really great to work remotely. Now, while you are away, and this is just before you leave is to pause any non-income generating activities or to outsource them if you can during your trip if it's just a shorter period of time like it was for me because this freed up a lot of time in my agenda to just focus on client work do the minimal things to sustain my business and to have more time with my parents and my boyfriend to enjoy because It was also a holiday for me. It was not just a working remotely time. So what I did is I didn't send out any newsletters, which is something I usually do every second week. I prepared podcasts and blog posts in advance. So obviously I had to work a little bit more in September to make that happen. But that helped me a lot to just know that they were going to be published automatically without me having to do the work during the trip anymore. And that there was going to be at least something published for my audience. I was thinking quite a while about if I should post during this month on Instagram and Facebook, etc. Or if I should just ghost my audience and not talk about them to kind of take a bit of a break from social media and in the end I thought well I'll just see if I'm in the mood to post something and if I am then I will otherwise I won't but then I thought I already know I won't be posting anything if I don't force myself to sit down and write content which is what I usually do once a week so I decided to just not post to not have that pressure of having to come up with a post and have it ready for my followers, but to just enjoy the time off and use it as a time to also recharge my batteries and come back more inspired. And that was actually the case because in the last few days of our road trip, I was feeling this itch of getting started again and I had lots of ideas that I could put into content so that was really good and that was something that I hadn't felt in a while before so I can definitely recommend that but what I'm trying to say here is that 
if you are wanting to also use this time as a holiday, I would recommend to not do your full workload, but tune it down to all the income generating activities like client work or, you know, certain promotions. But don't do the whole thing because it will burn you out and you won't enjoy it as much and you will come back not refreshed and not inspired. Another tip that I have for you, and this is also while you're away already, try to communicate very openly with the rest of the group if you're traveling with other people, which was the case for me about when you're going to be working, how long it will take and what the others should do in the meantime. For us, like I said, usually they didn't even notice that I worked because they were still asleep, especially in the first week when they were a little bit jet lagged still. But on non-travel days that we did have, I sometimes said, well, I need to cut some videos or do some client work. Why don't you guys do something outside in the meantime? Then I can get my work done. You can see something of the city, have a nice experience, and then I'll get you'll get back and we'll leave from the accommodation or we'll do something else. So, for example, when we were in Dunedin, I was doing a bit of working. My parents went to see the botanical gardens and they really loved it. I loved my time where I could just focus and do my work. Then they came back, we left the accommodation and drove on to the next one. So that was perfect and nobody had to wait around for anyone else and nobody got angry or annoyed that we couldn't be doing things. So that's really, really important to communicate openly and just, you know, manage expectations about how much and how long you're going to be working. I have one last tip for you and I think this is probably the most important one of this whole episode and that is to enjoy your time and to recharge. It's really really important that you do that like I said before otherwise you are just going to come back stressed and it's not gonna be good for your business. I hope that these tips helped you a little bit to see if it was feasible for you to also do a little bit of a digital nomad break or even extended period of time. But like I said in the beginning, if you have any questions, if you want me to help you plan your digital nomad trip with systems or setting up a business in a way, let me know. We can do that in a coaching session and I will hear you next time when it's again time to talk socials.